Crossroads Media. Oh! 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 What's up, everybody? If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up button as well. I greatly appreciate it. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, all your podcasting platforms. And every Monday and Thursday at 11 a.m., we have Coffee with Broads right here on YouTube. The way you get access to that, well, $4.99 a month here, you join the Broads Media community. I can't thank you all enough who have already subscribed to it. And if you want to join the fun, man, we're waiting for you. You also get access to the Discord channel as well, which is always a blast. So if you're interested, the information is down below in the description. That Thank you all so much and enjoy the show. <laughs> Maxie said, dude, huh? Maxie hits the four point play, huh? Maxie has 46, huh? Maxie plays a billion minutes, huh? This dude was insane. Madison Square Garden is fucking quiet as hell tonight. What a victory. And Joel and Bede deserve this because the way he poured his heart on the floor through the first four games and barely sniffed any help on the night where he was tragic. That was an epic, horrible Joel Embiid effort. All the turnovers were a disgrace. This guy was sloppy as hell and couldn't do a damn thing until, until overtime happened. A block on Jalen Brunson, diving on the floor for the final defensive rebound. He had a beautiful and one. Also, when Kelly Oubre misses a two-foot layup, he snags it and earns a trip to the charity stripe. All right, this dude was all over the place in the overtime period. And I heard from a lot of Sixers fans after the first four games, I'd rather have someone who can at least make an impact in the fourth quarter and not have them be as good through the first three quarters, essentially. They hated and beat so much. They said the first three quarters are useless. If you can't make plays happen late in the game, then what are you useful for? So don't fucking flip now. Don't be turning the page now on us, all right? Because that man was extremely important in the overtime period after Nick Nurse didn't learn that you can't play him the whole second half. They eventually had to pluck him off the court and put him on the bench because it was that atrocious. Thank the Lord Tyrese Maxey. And B got help from a lot of his teammates. Tobias Harris at the free throw line. Tobias Harris from behind the arc. He bailed out the offense when it was going through the traditional ugly, piss-poor offense. He takes a pretty contested jump shot mid-range J, and he's able to knock it down. Nothing but back iron. The net barely moved. Pretty awesome. Just insane. Tyrese Maxey, how he stole that game. It reminded me of Reggie Miller putting his hands up to his neck. You get those four points on a three uh, a three pointer in the foul. I'm thinking about John Stewart on the sidelines with a face of disgust, with a face like my man saw a ghost. Remember when Sam Darnold was sitting on the bench and he was staring into the abyss, not knowing what world he was in, not knowing if he was living a real life, not knowing where he was. That was John Stewart after Maxi cashes in. This guy then pulls up and hits a logo three. Oh my God. Oh my God. God, the balls on this guy on the road to have his superstars back. Joel deserves another crack at it. He really does because that was horrible. It was indefensible. I realized that probably the next three, four, five days was going to make me sick because all I would have to do would be dealing with people that are going so crazy and it is what it is. But man, wow, wow. Wow! How did they win that ball game, fellas? That's beautiful stuff. You even had to deal with the flagrant foul call on Embiid when he takes a swipe and it accidentally hits Brunson. He didn't mean to. Brunson put his shoulder into him to draw the contact, and then when Embiid came swiping down, because Brunson put his body closer to Joel, well, yeah, I mean, it ends up smacking him in the face. <laughs> I mean, Brunson scored the first five points in overtime. You go, oh, man, come on. Were we just delaying the inevitable? Now we have five more minutes. 
minutes to watch this team collapse because let's be honest with you, there were some fourth quarter minutes that reminded you of every fourth quarter minute of the last 28 years of my life. Turning the ball over, bad passes, the ball's going out of bounds by the half court line. They could barely get the ball to Joel Embiid and, and that was a big problem. I saw a lot of people saying, why is it Embiid on the low block? Get this guy on the low block! And I'm thinking, did you watch the game? The second he gets the ball, either, I I guess, that final Mitchell Robinson steal on Embiid, that wasn't necessarily bringing the trap and bringing a wave of defenders, but what has been working for the Knicks was they would bring that added layer, they'd bring that extra body, now Joel has to move the ball and things got very ugly, things related to a turnover. So if you are the Knicks, or excuse me, if you are Nick Nurse, wouldn't you think would be a better idea to at least give Joel Embiid a a, a possibility to execute to work facing himself and facing the defender, facing the basket, and maybe drawing himself away from the low block because then they're not automatically coming with an extra defender. Then he can at least see the floor and have the ball in his hands. I just like that better because you're getting your best player the ball with a better chance to succeed. Now, ultimately, things did not pan out well for him today through the first four quarters, but I'm just talking about game plan and strategy-wise. I'm not going to destroy the Sixers for maybe allowing Joel Embiid to operate farther from the basket because when he was doing his traditional back to the basket and trying to lower somebody uh, as, as close to the rim as humanly possible, the ball was coming out of his hands in seconds. And more times than not, this team is not built for their sharpshooters. And I'll, and I'll use that with air quotes because I don't know what type of sharpshooters they really have. They haven't helped you all series long. If you have a bunch of playmakers and a bunch of spacers and Buddy Heald came over as a 43% shooter and he's been red hot and and guys have been unreal, well then, yeah, let's live with all those shots because, well, you're great and you can. But that hasn't been the case through the first four games of the series. So I don't know. It just put me in a spot where I can understand asking him to go to work farther from the basket in totality. But anyway, it doesn't really matter how they got it done. It was just about getting getting it done, all right, because there was some ugliness. There was about two minutes to go, all right? Oh, no, that was when, (laughs) that's sorry. The two minutes to go was the Embiid and one, the Embiid splitting one of two with the Oubre miss, Embiid's block on Brunson, and and all of that crazy stuff. But, yeah, then Jalen Brunson had the ball in his hands, and then he tries to go up with it, and then he ends up trying to make a pass to the corner. I guess there was some miscommunication with the Knicks, and the ball goes out of bounds. That was right after the Sixers screwed up a possession of their own. So it did get wild pretty heavily. But when the score was 87-86, and Bede misses a baby hook, which rimmed around, but two misses the putback. Brunson hits free throws the other way, and, and Bede was stolen on the low block, which went to a fast brace, fast break Knicks dunk. And I thought then and there, it was over. I mean, how am I going to rely on this team to run a crisp, clean offense in the fourth quarter to set up amazing looks? That's not what happened here. He got bailed out. You need stars to make plays. You need guys to put the team on their back. And I didn't know if Tyrese Maxey after seeing some of the games this series. He would be really bad in the first half, and then he'd have an explosive third. What I saw was bits and pieces of the Tyrese Maxey experience. He'd have moments in the playoffs where you go, all right, baby, we know you're capable, we know you're a dog, but what what separates you at this time of the year is consistency. So it doesn't surprise me that he can pop off like this in a seven-game series. The next level for him is to go through this journey and then eventually... Not 46 points, but on a night-to-night basis, we need you to be 30-plus. We need you to be that guy. We need you to run the offense. I saw a two-man game, and Kyle Lowry gets in foul trouble, so then Nick Nurse put him on the bench, and then your offense looked different between Maxi and B with the two-man game as they were trying to get looks for Maxi to utilize his speed and just his ability to be red hot in those moments to cash out from deep. But, man, it's like when Maxi does it, I, I didn't know if he had the 46 in him. I didn't know if he had the 46 four-point play. That's iconic level stuff. This is, in what world did the Sixers steal that game? 
This isn't the same as game two where the Knicks had no business winning because that was the referees handing them the victory. There were no referees handing out victories today. This was all about Maxi doing it himself. This was all about Maxi saying, this is my time. I recognize that Joel isn't dipping into his bag today. I realize that Joel Embiid is not having it. And I don't want to hear all the bullshit for the next three days. I got him. I got him. I'll put him on my back. And he sure did. He sure did. I knew he could be good in the playoffs. I didn't know if he was going to give us this. This is special. This is dynamic. This is game changer. This is this is legacy level stuff. When you talk about the NBA postseason, now that Tyrese Maxey has this, and I do expect this to be more of the norm throughout our Tyrese Maxey experience as a fan base. But that was absurd. Absolutely absurd. Legacy changing. Put himself on the map more so than ever before. Got an all-star bid. Got his name with the best in the all-star game. That's not the same as doing it on the biggest stage. That's not the same as going on the road when Joel is having a stinker and the team looked completely dead with no life. The post was non-existent. You thought they were dead on arrival coming back to Philadelphia. And now they have a chance in game six at home, which is expected to be an advantage, although with 40% Knicks fans in that building, I'm not necessarily sure how it's going to go. But it won't be as hostile as it was in New York. And Maxie was able to do it there like that? Special. 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 I'm not going as far as this is no longer Embiid's team. This is the passing of the torch. No. When you have two great players, some nights it's on Embiid. Some nights it's on Maxie. Let's look at the Denver Nuggets, for example, who just handled their business against the Lakers, right? Let me explain to you how it went. All right? It's not as if Jokic had 50. Jokic had 27 points on about 20 shots. He had seven turnovers. Didn't, didn't have an efficient day. Jamal Murray posterizes LeBron. Jamal Murray banged some big threes. Let's go take a look at what the Milwaukee Bucks did not too long ago. Remember when Chris Middleton was lighting the world on fire and the NBA universe couldn't imagine witnessing that? Chris Middleton was cooking. Sometimes it's others. And it's okay for that to happen. And what we watched today was Tyrese Maxey help out Joel Embiid, and you need that. All great teams have that. It's not Jokic every night. Sometimes it's Murray. And today with the Sixers, it's not Embiid every night. Sometimes it's Maxi. They didn't have the luxury in previous games, though, because when Joel Embiid put up 35 or when he scored 40-plus or whatever it is, what well, the bias would finish with seven. Maxi would be super inefficient and overwhelmed and swarmed by the other team's defense. Things wouldn't go right. But it's crazy what happens when others around you can do their job. Imagine if Embiid just has an average day and you get good, competent play from the rest of your team. It makes it way easier. You're not relying on almost a 50 spot from Maxi and a logo three and an and one on a four-point play. You're not relying on that stuff. It's crazy how the game changes when you actually have some role players and others show up and step up. It's a big game for Tobias. Huge game for Tobias. Free throws, massive. It's big stuff. Very, very important. In the beginning of the game, you thought he was the only one that showed up to play. Those are those ones you don't forget, man. And I really hope the Sixers don't make this for nothing. In the grand scheme of things of knowing Tyrese Maxey's future, we'll always reflect back on this. But in regards to game six, you can't lay an egg at home. You can't stink up the joint. This thing has to go seven. What's unfortunate is it should be three, two, sixers. You know what I'm saying? It should be three, two, sixers if we're being fully transparent. But that's where we're at right now. We can't change that. This is where we are. Wow, 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 Still can't believe it. Absolutely in all. Let's go to the Anytime Hotline, baby. Let's react with the people. Here we go. 
Tyrese Maxey, bro. <laughs> Holy fucking shit. Seven points in 15 seconds. Reggie Miller-esque, keeping our season alive. That's right, baby. Man, I, I don't know why I feel so good after this game. I mean, it was just such an exciting game, such a great game from a neutral standpoint. So many back and forths. Brunson is unbelievable, but my God, Tyrese with timely three after timely three, just when you think that we made the dumbest play of all time, turnovers, this and that, Brunson throws the ball out of bounds for no reason. Man, what a game. What a game. Um, and B's got to calm down with the turnovers for sure. Some of his turnovers were just god awful. But the dude still put up a triple-double, I mean, on one knee with Bell Palsy. It's just, you know, it's still a great performance from him. I'm definitely happy. The rebounding he was better with today. He was definitely better rebounding today than the previous uh, four games. So that part was definitely nice to see as well. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I'm confident it was a great win. One game at a time. Let's keep it going, man. Let's keep it going. It ain't over till it's over. That's for sure. That's right. And this series has been so close. Every game, except for the one the Sixers won prior to this, that was actually a comfortable victory for the for the Sixers. But other than that, it's been right there. It's a coin flip every single night. This thing is a one-point game heading into the fourth. This game's in overtime. Game two came down to a crazy non-foul call. This thing is right there every single night. And that's why I wasn't rolling this team out because... It, it, it can happen. It can't far shot, and they made it very difficult for themselves. Being down 3-1 isn't easy. Having to play in Madison Square Garden twice and needing to win twice is not simple, but they checked one of those off already. They liked the green check mark right off tonight, so there's still work to be done, but it's not as if they were completely outclassed every game where you knew you just didn't have what it took to stay with that group. Okay, now in the fourth quarter, I do agree that the Knicks seem to have a better flowing offense than the Sixers do. They collapse every time. Every time. Every fourth quarter, it is the most abysmal offensive sets Every time. So, that'll probably <laughs> make it an issue by the end of this. I wouldn't be surprised if after game six, to some level, I'm ripping apart the final four minutes of action. Unless it just happens to be a night where they do something that's more sustainable and way more savvy. Uh, but Nick Nurse hasn't really been savvy. I, I really haven't seen that much. Uh, he, he's still trying to run and beat out there for the second half that way. Until he realized, I, I can't. And with about six minutes to go. You're doing this on the fly. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, just crazy. And B tonight, 19 points, 16 boards, 10 assists, five blocks. So yeah, he did end up snagging that triple double. But for my full honesty here, I thought Embiid sucked. I mean, you're talking iconic level of piss poor play out of him for about the whole game. But he showed up in the most important time. And there were a lot of haters out there saying, well, what is Embiid if he can't show up at the most important time? Well, he did. I mean, there's just no sugarcoating it. He did. Now, I don't downplay automatic greatness for the first three quarters in other games. Like, if he has 37 points in the fourth quarter after running through the whole second half, he's a little bit quieter because he's got nothing left in the tank. I value those first three quarters and 37 points more than most do, and I'm just using numbers as an example here, not a specific game, but I'm just saying in general, I value that because you're not in position in the fourth for maybe a Maxi to, to cook. I know Maxi's capable of this now, right? Like, Maxi is capable of this. Not that you're, you're going to win games when you're down and, and hit a four-point play, then hit a logo three. Uh, it's not going to come down to this level, but my point is, I know Maxi can close. I just watch Maxi close and do it to an epic level. So if Embiid is wearing down in the fourth quarter due to all of his situations, but he's keeping you involved in the game until the fourth, and we 
need Maxi to help close it out as the primary ball handler. I don't think it's ridiculous to ask for that. So I wouldn't devalue Embiid's play to get you there. I, I need to see someone else help him out. And Maxi was doing that here, and it, it was special. Now, Dawn Staley tweeted this out. How about that? You know Dawn Staley's one of the goats. I need the Wells Fargo Center full of Sixers fans. Season ticket holders, do not sell your tickets to Knicks fans. I repeat, do not sell your tickets to Knicks fans. Pour it into our Sixers. We can really do this, ish, man. Dawn, don't be doing this, Dawn. I'm ready to run through a damn wall. All right, I'm ready to go. Dawn Staley tells me not to do something. I ain't doing it. All right, maybe not Mama Broads. Mama Broads, when I was younger, she says don't do something. I'm doing it. Whether you like it or not, I'm doing it. Dawn Staley, yes, ma'am. Whatever you need, I'm here for you. I was going back and forth on Twitter with idiots all day about the ticket stuff. It is what it is. There's a cause and an effect for everything. The Sixers' modern history is the cause and effect of why we are sick of spending our money on mediocre results. My response? Then we shouldn't take pride in being the best fan base because Joel Embiid's out there with half a face and one leg, and he's given us everything. And with your mindset, he deserves Knicks fans screaming fucking Embiid in his own building as a reward. I think that's silly. I think that's silly to say it's the Sixers' fault. Look, the the ownership group and all the hatred towards the ownership group, uh, the the we need to take a stand to Joshua Harris. You need to take a stand when you're 17 win seasons, not with the process title, but I'm talking when when your incompetence, like they're not getting over the hump in the second round. That's been the national storyline and the local storyline for the Sixers. But making a statement about ownership is when they're unwilling to spend money. You can't ever have a winning season, your 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 17 win seasons nonstop. They don't want to ever do anything good. They don't care at all, at all. Like I'm talking gross level. Not they don't care about the city of Philadelphia and their business people. I'm talking Oakland A's. I'm talking um, you know, that level of incompetence. That's when, hey, we gotta make a stand and make sure that this is right. Having struggles getting out of the second round is not where you stop spending money to support Support Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey. Those are two different extremes in my eyes, but I'm sort of getting sidetracked uh, because tonight was great, and I want to try and focus on what was great here. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. I'm not fucking leaving! This is my home! You're going to need a wrecking ball to take me out of here, Ben Stiller in the stands. David Zasloff in the stand. Fucking Mike Lee in the stand. I mean, I- Dude, all of them. All of them. All those former Knicks acting like they're a part of the team, picking guys up when they're underneath the basket. They were pissing me off. Get the fuck out of my face. All them quiet as <laughs> Choke it. Bring it back memories, baby. Tyrese Maxey. How does it feel? How does it feel? It's got to feel even more painful because let's be transparent here. That's a nice killer. Maxey's a nice killer. He's got the smile. He's he's this cute little kid. That's what he is, right? He's this little kid that doesn't stop smiling. He He's not this badass. So it's got to feel even worse, I'd imagine, right? There's got to be something to it being th- this, this guy, this little smiley fuck. This little smiley motherfucker who's just popping off and shooting buckets and making it rain. This little fuck. That's got to be more annoying than if it's LeBron. Well, this is what LeBron does. Or this dude's a killer and it's a known killer. Maxie's going to be a known killer. He has to earn that respect. And this is step one into getting there. Because, I mean, this was something. This was no joke. This was what Kendrick put out on Drake type shit. You know what I'm saying? This is some euphoria, motherfucker. Oh, man. That's right. Kendrick did his thing. And I'm a Drake guy. I'm a Kendrick guy. Kendrick did his thing. He did. Let's take another call. Hello, Rhodes. Rowdy Syracuse here. I'm telling you what. I I feel a little bit bad for Maxie having to hold those brass balls (laughs) 
up and walk every day. That man was ice. Had ice all through his veins. That's right. I thought after he missed the the two free throws and then the and one, I thought, honestly, I thought that was going to cost us the whole game. That's an excellent point to bring up that I forgot about. I have it here in my notes. I just passed on through it. But when he missed three straight free throws, it was a three-point game. So talk about demoralizing. Talk about just painful, brutal, that you're sitting there in a position to get free points and you're going to the line. And as I mentioned earlier, Embiid split one of two when he got Oubre's miss. And uh, come on, we can't be losing on free throws. Please, not free throws. There's a few things that make it so much harder to watch. It's when you play sloppy and you're turning the rock over every single second because that's just stupid basketball. It's not poised ball. It's not prepared ball. It's so hard, man. It's hard to watch those moments. But when you see the free throw, come on, knock down some free throws. You can't miss three straight. Maxie's too good of a free throw shooter to miss three straight. And Beat's too good of a free throw shooter to miss when the most important time of the game is on the line. But, 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 they handled that adversity pretty well. It's a good point you brought up there. But, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. I, I mean that to me that just shifted the whole momentum of the series. Now you you had the, the Knicks had they in their head they had it won. Yeah. It was won. Yeah. It was over. And yeah. now they had to head back to Philly. We need the Philly fans, we need to all show out. Big time. Gotta show out. Then you, you get one more, and it, it's a it's a zero zero series. You're right, and I really like the thing you brought up here too. Great call, Ryan. You know I love you. But one thing you brought up I think is very important is the mindset. When you feel it's over, they showed a replay of Jalen Brunson. It was after a, a fast break, an easy dunk, two points, and he's celebrating and he's cheering from his defensive side. And the look in his eyes was, we did it. We advanced. We're going to the second round. And now that you have to somewhat soak it in and realize that, oh shit, we got to go on the road now and play another game. If you your brain is already wired into thinking we got this dub and we're good and to have to reset and recalibrate it's not impossible and special players like Jalen Brunson they can do it right stars find ways to do it but it's it's not easy that's all it's not easy and if Brunson does it does that mean the role players do it do they come out pissed off and make a statement or do they let this really affect them it's not easy that's why they always say the closeout game's the hardest and when you emotionally attach yourself to we did our job and then before you know oh no 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 we didn't and it was an emotional burn this is a bad one this is gonna cost them sleep tonight I don't know maybe there's something to that now how about this for an update Nick Nurse apparently uh he injured his finger when he slammed his hand in frustration on a call during the Sixers Game 5 win. Unclear if it's a break or a sprain. Nurse couldn't draw up plays in the second half because he couldn't grip the marker. What? What? What's going on with these coaches getting all injured throughout the postseason? Maybe that's why the offense looked that bad. (laughs) I'm sure I wasn't the first person to make that joke. Dude, that's nuts. Tyrese Maxey had a 16-point fourth quarter to send Game 5 to overtime. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. Come on, man. I'm looking to see some quotes from the big fella. I keep watching it on repeat, nonstop. Sixers had an 89% chance to win game two and lost. Knicks had a 95% chance to win game five and lost. And I told you there's a big difference between how we did it and how the Knicks did it for game two. One was luck because, well, the refs stink. And then the other one was pure determination. Tyrese Maxey at 23 years old is the youngest in Sixers history with this many points in a playoff game. 46 points. Dude's a legend. All right, everybody, those are my thoughts, baby. We'll be talking about this puppy for quite some time. You know that. You know that. Should we take one more? Should we take one more? We'll take one more. Hey, ignore my call earlier from Bashing and Beat. <laughs> That was before the uh, Maxi shot. I'm not. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's take. Oh, hold on. I want to hear what you said about Embiid. 
Let's take a listen about him. We'll go to Embiid's call first, and then we'll switch. Hold on. Let me turn. Where's? Let me turn off my TV. What the fuck did I? What the hell did I just watch? That was that was the worst season performance I've seen out of a superstar in any fucking sport. Are you kidding me, Joel Embiid? Are you fucking kidding me? You throwing the throwing the ball out of bounds left and right, giving away the ball. Here you go, here you go, here you go, here you go. What the actual fuck? I can't disagree with anything you were saying because I was feeling the same exact way in the moment. All right, now I'll give you your opportunity to redeem yourself. Hey, ignore my call earlier from bashing a beat. <laughs> that was before the uh, maxi shot. I'm not going to lie. He played well down the stretch. He was battling on the boards. He was playing tough D. Uh, he, he played well down the stretch. I'm not going to lie. He, he saved himself. I'm not going to lie. He really did, bro. But the big thing, the big question is, well, obviously, can we win the series? But even after the series, I, I, I don't see this team having enough juice and having enough stamina to, to go further. But I'll worry about that later. I'll worry about that later. With the potential matchup with Indiana. I ain't afraid of no Indiana, but I, I'm not getting there. I'm not there, dude. We got to worry about game six. And I know you know that as well, but I'm not getting there. I appreciate everybody's phone call. Thank you all so much, and I'll see you on the next one.